In the world of boxing, there are stars, there are superstars, and then there are legends. Tonight, two legends face each other in this ring. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Waiting out of the red corner with his head trainer, Alton Murkison, wearing black, official weight, 175 pounds. This 1988 Olympic silver medalist, voted the most outstanding fighter of that Olympic Games, has a professional record of 54 victories, including 40 knockouts with six defeats. From Pensacola, Florida, the former middleweight world champion Former super middleweight world champion, three-time light heavyweight world champion, and former heavyweight champion of the world, future Hall of Fame legend, Roy Jones Jr. And fighting out of the blue corner, with his head trainer, Nazim Richardson, wearing black with red, officially weighing in also at 175 pounds. He brings an outstanding professional resume to the ring, consisting of 50 victories, including 32 knockouts, with five defeats and one draw. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the former undisputed middleweight world champion and light heavyweight champion of the world, the future Hall of Fame legend, Bernard, the Executioner, Hopkins. For a fight that was dismissed as being past its shelf life, there is energy in this arena. There certainly is. Roy Jones Jr. still has his fans, and Hopkins has his followers. There is energy, yes. Tony Weeks, okay, referee. Tony, okay, look, he goes right here, it's okay. And if they go that slow, right here, right here it's okay, anything below that's low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. 17 years to get to this point. Glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore ringside with Sugar Ray Leonard and Doug Fisher. Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones, after all this time, now just moments away. And Doug, based on what just happened to Roy Jones last time out, what could we see early on here? We might see Hopkins box out of character and more aggressively than usual to test that sweet spot that many people feel Roy Jones has. I think Roy Jones may be a little more aggressive than usual. Because he needs to surprise Hopkins with something. To show that he's in the fight. Thanks there and a smile from B Hop. Both men are chess players by nature. They are both boxers who like to capitalize on their opponent's mistakes. So we will probably see a fair amount of feints early in this bout. Of course, for so many years, that chess game being played by Roy Jones was with supreme athleticism, his ability to get in with speed, with athleticism. And for Bernard, it was always the sweet science, the skill. Now, the diminished athleticism of Roy at 41, where does it leave things in terms of that chess match? Well, also, the fact that, you know, this fight means so much to both fighters. I mean, it mean this means an enormous amount of pride and, and, and bragging rights. Uh, they don't seem to to be loosening up now, so anything can happen in the very first round. You know what, Joe, you, you, you mentioned the diminished athleticism of Roy Jones, and, and you're absolutely right. He is not what he was six or seven years ago. 
but he's still a superb athlete. No doubt about it. What he was was one of the most elite pro athletes there was on Earth. Absolutely. Arguably the best athletic specimen ever to, to lace on a pair of boxing gloves. And you, you can make a case that he's still a better athlete than Bernard. That, that 60% or 75% of Roy is still capable of getting a lot accomplished. A cautious, tactical first round here. Bernard now comes in. Both fighters are very come tight. Come stop, stop, stop. I got you. Because I can tell by the way they're they're throwing their punches right now. They're not loosening up yet. I still a little reluctancy from both fighters. You know, both guys are legends, but they're not used to being in the ring with a fellow legend. <laughs> they're used to being in with lesser fighters, if not in terms of their, their class and skill, in terms of their names. And now there's two bona fide legends in there against each other. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, Here we go. Even in some of those signature victories and headline making losses for Roy Jones, he was always the name. Be it Ruiz or Tarver or Glenn Johnson. Stop, stop, stop. Let him up, let him up. Baby, like he walking up. He dancing up. The minute you move, he gonna jump out and look for a counter hook. Whenever you double or triple your jab, up X, he's gonna fall straight back in the line. He's gonna go to the road, make the investment, and look for the left hook because he drops his right hand inside. Just walk him. Walk him to him. Yeah, I'm just struggling with pick, pick it down. Mess with him. But make sure you're playing at him over. All you gotta do is get in the floor and you'll take charge. But you gotta take charge with your jab and so forth. Get ahead and make him desperate. All right? Come on. Here we go. Take charge with the jab is what Roy heard. Meanwhile, looking for the left hook. Making an impact, doubling things up. Hopkins, corner. Feeling they, they've seen what now they can lay forth a game plan for. I thought Hopkins trainer Nazim Richardson gave him the perfect advice. Back him up with your jab. Watch, watch out for that left hook. So double it up. He'll drop that right. You come with the left hook. You know, if you look at both guys, you know, they although they don't like each other, there is mutual respect. Right hand got in stop, both to the stop, body stop. and up top from B. Hop. Set up stop, with the jab. Stop. Set up with a jab to the jab to the stomach and to the chest. Worked his way in and then fired off the right hand. And you saw briefly when that right hand landed, Jones kind of spun a little bit. He kind of twisted. Earlier this week, Doug, when we talked, you said to me, I just want to see how he reacts the first time he gets hit clean in talking about Roy Jones. Well, also, Roy, you know, you have to think about Roy getting knocked out by Danny Green. The fact that he got past his first round is kind of uh, a, big, a good thing for his, for his mind. You never his, know how a guy's going to react, right, Ray? After exactly. he's been floored by a first round TKO the next stop, time stop, out. Stop. Tony Weeks, the referee, may have his hands full in some moments tonight. You get that sense. Roy comes in with the left hand. Bernard escapes it, then ties up on the inside. Stop, stop, I got you. I'll let him up, let him up, let him go. should really keep his hands up, although that's his style. But I think he should be a little more defensive. Bernard rushes in, Bull rushes in, now falls him right into the corner. Places two headshots, then goes back to that belt line. Hands 
This is where Roy does not want to be. He should spin his, he should spin his man. And take the fight to the center of the ring. You wonder if Roy has the legs to keep a fight in the center stop, ring stop, for stop, three minutes up, of a round. Pretty tough kick task. We invite you to join us. You see blood coming from the left eye. You got to put your hand out of the closet joint. You know what I'm saying? Put your hand out of the closet joint. Bernard is picking his spots behind his jab, but that was a, a, a lead right hand that backed Roy Jones into a neutral corner. And he worked the body pretty well while grappling on the inside with Jones. Here's another angle. A right hand followed by a left hook. Roy Jones is just covering up. He's not really punching back. Those AT&T users who are 21 or older joining us from home are asking you who is winning. You can text in B Hop or Roy at 8814. Message and data rates may apply. We invite you to join us on our Zakate text throughout the night. Accidental clash of heads causing that cut on Roy Jones. You know what happens to most fighters as we age, myself included, is the fact that we can take a shot on the chin, but it's the side of the head that has a tendency to affect the equilibrium. Roy's has been greatly affected. It all started with Antonio Tarver back in 2004. Glenn Johnson got to him. Most recently, Danny Green down in Australia. Roy complaining that it was a premature stoppage and even going so far as to claim that Green had illegal hand wraps. Bernard. Just over the top with that right hand. You know, they criticize Bernard Hopkins, says that he's not exciting or whatever, but I think he's one of the best technicians in the ring. Undoubtedly, and has been for a long time. If you're a fan of old school boxing, if you're a fan of technique, if you're a fan of ring generalship and timing and well-placed punches, then you're a fan of Bernard Hopkins. He finds a way. He takes his time. He, he, he breaks his man down. Doesn't waste punches. Every punch has a meaning. Every punch has a purpose. To a certain extent, every movement has a purpose with him. Lays traps, figures out range. How he can deliver a punch. I'd say Hopkins is the ring general right now, but it does look like Roy Jones is getting a little more loosened up than he was in the first two rounds. Yeah, but what ha what's happening again by Roy dropping his hands? I mean, that's his fight. That's normal. That's his normal style. But you also have to compensate for the inactivity or your age, if you will. 41 years old is Roy Jones. Bernard, a fresher 45. You look at Bernard Hopkins, he's an anomaly. He's 45 years old, has the body of a 20 year old. But he's thick, he's a, he's a he's professor. He's done it the right way. Roy comes in to place that right hand. Some of the middle making him close his hand and he can't point in. Make, look, point your, throw your points up. He close his hand in and he can't swing wide. Make him pull his elbows in. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Time you feel the contact on the inside. Time you feel the contact. Time you feel the contact on the inside. You throw your points up the middle. 
be hoping he can jump in, land a shot, and tie you up. That's all he's looking to do. That stick of control, even when he jumps. With this stick, with that chain. Had a faint to it. So far, Hopkins has been the ring general in there. There's a nice left hook right on the borderline. Hasn't had a knockout since stopping Oscar De La Hoya with a body shot in 2004. There have been plenty of times when he's been asked as to the outcome of this fight against Roy Jones where he has answered that he will knock out Roy Jones. I've been waiting for Roy Jones to start throwing his jab, to use his left jab, and he's starting to do it now. Doug Fisher, how do you have it through three? I have it three rounds to zero for Bernard Hopkins. I think he's getting off first. He's, he's landing the quality punches. And he, you know, whenever he sees fit, he's able to, to, to muscle or force Roy Jones Jr. to the ropes or, or, or to a corner. What makes uh, Bernard Hopkins such an effective fighter is the fact that he knows exactly where to land punches. He throws those body shots, he's put the rib shots, the kidney shots, and follows up with the left hook. It's a marksman. And let's face it, Roy Jones is just not landing punches. He's not landing quality punches. You have to score those first three rounds for Hopkins. Well, normally, Roy outspeeds his opponents. Here, he's fighting a guy who's clever, a guy who's just as tall as he is, if not taller, a guy who works his body, slows, brings those hands down. Hopkins does have two-inch height advantage. He's a right to the belt line. I don't like Roy against the ropes. I, I think his chances are much better in the center of the ring. Stop, stop, I got you. But it looks like now that Roy is reacting more to every move, every feint that Hopkins gives him, more so now than he did in the, in the first round and the second round. And Hopkins is using that to back him up. I mean, it doesn't look like Hopkins has, has uh, visibly hurt Roy Jones at any point so far. But it, it does appear that Jones is leery of those punches. He does respect him. Also, um, Hopkins is there giving some head feints. Reacting to each other. <laughs> the pawns have been moved into place on that chessboard. trying to remind Bernard of his speed. And, and that was what, if not speed not finds everything. Hands at the hips. It putting out that target of a right hand, inviting something. Up. Dangerous, hands down, dangerous. Playful is Roy Jones. Trying to stir up those echoes of the former pound for pound number one. We're going to try to steal the shit by showing that. We're getting a little more comfortable. It's not even going to open up and play into our hands. But X, keep that thing going. Now what you're going to see is when you step, you can step over. That round hook will be there. But when you're driving back, don't smother yourself. You drive me back, take that half step back off, come back with that hook, drive that right hand back to the body. Let it go. Let your hand But keep go. breaking him down. Don't, don't play with that right hook to his body. When you get in there, drive that thing up in there, man. Drive it right up in his heart. All right? Don't play with him in there. You gonna break You know, this is what makes Bernard such an incredible fighter. He, he puts his punches together, he forces the opponent back, and tries to really nullify. And boy, I don't, I don't know, really know what that was. He was waving his glove. I don't know what that meant. That's, that's, that's just showboating. That's the razzle-dazzle that he hopes stole the round for him. And it was noted in the corner of Bernard Hopkins, as you heard Nazim Richardson said, you can tell he's getting more comfortable speaking of Roy Jones, but that'll play right into our hands. Right hand from the hop lands. You know what happens as we get older, and, and again, I'm using myself, 
we we still have speed, but we don't have that same commitment. How so? How so, Ray? To throw a punch. Normally, when I was in the ring, when I was younger, I should say, I would throw a jab or throw a right hand, and I I knew the guy couldn't hit me back. But as I got older and kept making those comebacks, I was concerned. Short right again. hand on the inside as he came forward by Roy Jones Jr. It's that commitment. Those lingering doubts can grow bigger. And now the pace picked up by Bernard. Lunges in, unable to connect. Well, Walk back to the ropes. Well, you know, Roy is really, really, Roy is really using his hand speed to kind of frustrate Hopkins. But the punches are not that uh, destructive. He threw a couple hard shots. There was one hard left of the body that, that Jones threw a moment ago when when Bernard was was pressing him up against the ropes. At least. Unlike some of the opening rounds, at least he is actually punching when they're in close together. Bernard walks him into that corner. But I would say Jones is still doing more talking than punching, than effective punching. And who knows, maybe he's getting it in, in, in Bernard's head. Maybe he wants to get to draw Bernard into that sort of... Uh, Shouting oh, man, oh, 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 right on the cup, right on and the cup. And you know, he knew exactly where the referee was. Tony Weeks went to the backside, and as soon as he did, that's exactly where it was placed. That was a vintage Bernard Hopkins oh, punch that to was Roy Jones' cup. school Philly Wars right there. Every tool in the tool belt, and he just unloaded one. Somebody lets a right hand go right below the oh. belt on purpose, right on the cup. Here's another angle. Tony Weeks to his left. Bernard knows it. He lets that right hand go right to the cup. He's old school in every way. <laughs> Those personalized lyrics that he'll do it his way. Bernard doesn't bite on a feint, instead, throws off a jab and then a right hand to the body. Jones has surprised a lot of people about going, well, it's, it's now a sixth round. Most people thought we'd end in round two or three. If he was hit clean, if he was put back into that place that he's been recently. But instead, neutralizing things to the best of his abilities, although Hopkins seemingly controlling the first half of the fight. Doug Fisher, your score. I have five rounds for Bernard Hopkins. I think Jones made him uh, competitive in, in rounds four and five, but he did not do enough, didn't do enough effective scoring to win those rounds, in my opinion. He's maintaining a little more than he's advancing. Stop, stop. 
You know, Ray, I'm not surprised at all that we're in the middle rounds. I, I thought that the fight would at least go into the late rounds because of the kind of boxer Bernard Hopkins is. I mean, when, when, he, when he first turned pro and leading into their first fight, he was known as a good right-handed puncher. But he has since changed his style to that of a, a complete boxer and a technician. He never goes for the knockout. Even his last knockout against Oscar De La Hoya, much smaller man. He wasn't looking for that knockout. He let it come. Well, and, and Bernard just wears you down. He just wears you down with his, with his body shots and just a barrage of punches. I think he prefers to do that against Jones. I think he wants to punish him. Well, he said that. He indicated that he wanted to punish Roy. Stop, stop. Let him up, let him up, let him up. And he truly believes that Roy's talent has dim diminished, where, whereas his has stabilized. Modern day Archie Moore, he defies age, does Bernard Hopkins. 45 years old and still among the elites in the game. Now, he's not signing on to fight the best young guys of the light heavyweight division, as that was a hit to the back of the head. It's, it's unlike Bernard Hopkins to go through the, this type of theatrics. This kind of reaction. Unless he was really hit hard. Especially with the kind of shot. Now ringside physician coming in here. and Bernard right to action. That spurs him on to make a fight of it. Oh, They're fighting right through the bell, right through the referee. They are going at it. Security into the ring. It just became a brawl instantly. That was a, this is a bizarre round. Two legends meeting up in a fight that folks were dismissing as lacking energy or drama and too late, and it turns into this halfway through. This, I mean, it's, it's surreal, it's, it's, it's absolutely bizarre, but I tell you what, it certainly got a rise out of the crowd here in the event center. Including Antonio Tarver sitting ringside. Wow. 
wild, wild six round. The hit behind the head, the extended delay, and then Hopkins comes out like a raging bull at Roy Jones. Here's how it finished up. Tony Weeks wants hey, to take no, control no, of this. No, no, no. Look, both of y'all, let's cut this out. Fight like a professional. No, no. We're going to fight like a professional. But here we go. Time in. Here they go. Will they get back to that place? To that emotional reaction that we just saw? I'll tell you what, the end of that round is not what you'd expect to see from 40-year-old veterans. It's what you expect to see from hot-headed young prospects, but I, I guess that tells you how much resentment, quite revealing emotion, Ray. hate they have for each other. Agreed, Doug. Quite revealing, Ray, isn't it? In it's terms of the intensity and what they really feel for each other. It's that emotional content. I mean, now all of a sudden, Roy has bounce in his legs. <laughs> it's like he went to a time machine. Stirred up some old memories. A lot of talk that's gone on for 17 years. Fights that could have been. Negotiations that went south. Because this fight is personal, these guys are, are really being very competitive towards one another. Stop, stop, I got you, stop. You know, Roy's leaning back. Roy keeps leaning back away from Hopkins' punches. And he's be careful of that. Bernard on the break. Watch it. Here we go. You know, Bernard can get away with sneaky stuff on the inside, but I think he has to be careful with the blatant stuff. Well, remember what he did a few rounds ago when Tony Weeks circled to the backside. He saw where the referee was and planted one down low. Roy Jones is an amazing athlete, and I, I think he's, he's willed himself to be competitive in this fight against Hopkins. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's sort of recaptured this form that we haven't seen from him, not in this fight. This is not the Jones, yeah. And, and not, not in a few fights against a world-class competitor like Bernard Hopkins. I'm, I'm waiting for an overhand right. <laughs> Roy looks <laughs> over stop, and just stop. shakes that off. Here's Bernard at his aggressive best, lunging in, landing an overhand right. Another overhand right. <laughs> and a nice right cross while they're still in the clinch. Right, uh, uh, hitting on the break. There was more action and emotion and drama in round six and seven of this fight than the entire fight on May 22nd, 1993. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Truth be told, their first meeting wasn't a good fight at all. Rather uneventful. This is eventful. This is exciting, and this is dramatic, because after that sixth round, we just don't know what to expect from these guys. Plus, you know the storylines. You've been deeply invested in the careers, legendary careers. And now, what could be one of the final chapters? How does it all unfold? But this really demonstrates the power of the mind. I mean, for Roy, again, for Roy Jones, who people look at as finished and everything else, he's holding his own. 
in this fight against Hawkins. I actually scored the seventh round for Roy Jones. First round I've scored for him. Of course, in the sixth round, there's a point deduction. Rolled out by Tony Weeks. The hit behind the head. It seemed like a fairly innocuous punch, but Bernard Hopkins stayed down for quite some time. When he rose up, all hell broke loose. Stop, 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 stop. Let him go. Two chess players reorganize. Think about the next move. Stop, stop, stop. No, 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 no. Hopkins making sure that he deposits a little bit in the bank every time he gets Jones against those ropes going to the body. Comes in with the jab, works his way in now, tries to place the right hand upstairs. Jones covers up, ties up now. See if they can work their way out of there. Stop, stop, stop. What Hopkins is trying to do, he's trying to wear wear Roy out, try to wear him down, push him, sh shove him, make him spend unnecessary energy inside, batter punching, they're doing everything. Is there another rabbit punch? Yes. You have a sense you know exactly position. where this is going. Stay right there. Stay Let's right look there. at this. Both fighters fall each other on that one. Yeah, there it was. It was very short, very small. One of the most dangerous punches that can be landed. Listen, both of your fighters each other on that one. Both of your fighters each other on that one. We're going to see what happens. Okay. We also yeah. Do I, I, yeah. I, well, I can't see what I'm calling. Okay. Just, just keep it clean. Come on. You know, guys, it looked like a deliberate punch to me. It didn't look like a hard punch, but it looked like a deliberate punch. Over here. No, no. Can you continue? Both of you are fouled on that one. Nobody's going to get any points. Can you continue? Okay, are you ready to go? You see all right? I won't go, baby. Come on. Okay, he's ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Time Second in. time tonight this has happened. Now, Joe, Tony Weeks told Bernard, both of you guys fouled on that one, so I'm not taking a point. What was Hopkins' foul? And once again, Hopkins comes out charging after the incident. He moves that round. We're going to have to go back and watch the replays there, get further determination, some clarity as to how everything shook out there in the eyes of Tony Weeks. Field. He's seen it all through the years. He knows about some intentional fouls. Ah, so Tip Hopkins, attack, right? Yeah, Hopkins landed a rabbit punch. Jones landed a rabbit punch. Hopkins reacted to the rabbit punch. Jones would say overreacted. So that was a retaliatory rabbit shot from Roy Jones. What did I say in round number one that Tony Weeks is going to earn his paycheck tonight? Oh, yeah. Who's winning? Bernard Hopkins, according to those of you texting in. Glad you're with us here from the Mandalay Bay Event Center. Joe Tessitore ringside with Doug Fisher and Sugar Ray Leonard. The rivals, Hopkins, Jones, round number nine. These middle rounds have been quite intriguing. Two delays with the rabbit punches, a brawl at the end of the sixth round. 
high intensity in round seven, and they march on. Neither fighter is taking a lot of chances. Oh, good right hand by Roy. A great right hand by Roy Jones. But as I was saying earlier, they, no one's taking chances. As the fight goes along, Ray, and the clock ticks down, and maybe a sense of urgency comes over Roy, what is the one opportunity that does exist for him to take a chance, to have that risk, and to get the reward? What would it be? Well, no one has not ever knocked uh, Hopkins out. He's a solid champ. Even at the tender age of 45, he's a solid champ. I think Roy is aware that if he's going to beat Hopkins, he has to beat him by points. Doug, what do you have to fight? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds for Bernard Hopkins. One round for Roy Jones Jr. That was the seventh round. The sixth round is a 10-8 round because of the point deduction. So Roy Jones needs to land more punches like that. He needs to land clean shots in the front of Bernard's head, not in the back of it. But I tell you what, he's just not active enough to win these rounds, to outpoint Bernard. Came up short on that right hand. Bernard backed off. Trying to chase him down. Range finding with the left, then sending forth a right. Bernard immediately turns around, fires off a right of his own. I think Roy needs to let those hands go. Those fast hands go. Let him go a little bit in the final 20 seconds here. He's giving Bernard something to think about. And he needed to do that. had his success early in the round forcing Roy Jones Jr. back as he has the entire fight but in the last 30 seconds of the round there's a nice right hand to the ear of Bernard Hopkins Roy had some moments in the final half minute of that ninth round heard Nazim Richardson saying they just want to survive so that they can say Roy looks better you see that um, Hopkins just pushed Roy into a corner well, he's far more effective working that body. Stop, 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 stop. Well, if Hopkins is going to make good on his promise to stop Roy Jones Jr. or force Roy Jones' corner to throw in the towel, he's going to have to start applying more constant pressure. He's got to stay on Roy. That's low blow. Yep. Left hand straight below the belt. Seemed like it was on the guard, but we will take a look. But in that exchange, a left hand straight below the belt. Okay, Bernard, you got five minutes. Accidental low blow. We're, we are not used to seeing this from Bernard Hopkins. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it, uh, it, it was low. It was a low blow. Yeah, kind of a borderline. I mean, it was just under well, the belt also, line. I would also ask you, 
how much was on that punch. It didn't seem like Roy Jones really loaded up with it, which, which makes this whole scene bizarre. And it kind of reminds me of Hopkins' fight with Joe Calzaghe. This is when the he took third some time. time. Yeah. This is the third time tonight that Bernard Hopkins has had an extended break based on a foul from Roy Jones Jr. You're going to have to straighten it out when you get to the corner. Now, that was earlier, before the low blow, where I can't touch you. I can't Bernard touch you. gave him a little okay, love tap up top. Okay. 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 Yeah, he was holding and hitting. Right. There was one low, right. and then there was one high. Perhaps Jones was retaliating okay, for go. that. Time in, fellas. So you have to wonder if, if this is all part of Bernard Hopkins' tactics. Stop, stop, I got you. To go down from borderline shots? Well, to, to, to sort of borderline stop, foul stop. Roy Jones so that he retaliates and then oh, Bernard down. goes into theatrics. Although you would think if he wants to, you know, he wants to, to beat Roy Jones, he doesn't want to win by disqualification. You would think he wants to win in, in fair fashion, in decisive fashion. And now Bernard is pushing up against the ropes before he gets separation. It's been a bizarre fight, hasn't it? You know what? Um, Hawkins is a very experienced, clever veteran. And I think he's just buying time. Trying to get a breather here. Do you think Hopkins needs a breather? Do you see anything in his body language that would tell you that he's getting a little fatigued? I don't. He's not blowing hard. Well, you see it on his driver's license. It reads 45, but we haven't seen it in the ring throughout his career. I just can't help thinking that, that Hopkins gives Roy Jones confidence when he goes down from these fouls. Uh, admittedly, they are foul punches, but they don't seem like they're powerful punches. But it's late in the fight, too, though. Good, good right hand. Lead up right by Hopkins. The bottom line is, Hopkins is, is landing the majority of clean legal blows in this fight. And thus, controlling what we assume the judges' scorecards will look like. Stop. I got you. I got you. Next. Anything he land, you can get it back by doubling your jab up and pushing him back and getting it right back. Keep your Listen, space. Both of y'all are holding. Both of y'all are both holding. We, we trying to fight. He keep grabbing. We when trying to fight. Hands 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 Every time he comes forward, the guy grab his hand, Tony. He's coming right to you. Let him come to you. When he comes to you, let the hand go. He ain't got nothing for you. You see everything coming. You see everything coming. On the road, take a half step back and drop your shot. Half step Sadesa Takate text poll, who is winning? 63% say Bernard Hopkins. I have to agree with the voters. Seconds out, let's go. They waited 17 years. They have under six minutes left in what they were anticipating for so long. Watch it, watch it, stop, stop, stop. Watch your hands in there. Come on. Uh-oh. Now it's Roy Jones' turn for a little theatrics. <laughs> He's saying he was headbutted. What's wrong? Wouldn't be the first time it happened with well, and you know what? You can see I lit a slice. I lit a slice. I lit a slice. Let the doctor look at you. Got an accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt. Tony Weeks saying it was an accidental head clash that opened up that cut. 
You go, up you go. the left yeah. eye. Okay. Accidental. Okay, accidental. Here we go. Time in. Let's go. Well, here on the strip, Bernard Hopkins was a minus 500 favorite. But the real bet to be made would have been the over on the amount of fouls and breaks in the action we've had. It has been an oddity throughout. Short left hand, then a flurry to the body. I got to stop, stop. See that cut? It's a merge there of the left eye of Roy Jones. It appears to be on the eyelid, which is really a bad spot, but it's not flowing. Bernard, uh, I would say Jones is handling the cut pretty well. He's not letting the trickle of blood affect him. But then again, Bernard's not doing a whole I got lot. You, I got you, I got you. Not targeting it. Roy is landing that right hand, lead off right hand, but he's not coming back with anything. Stop, stop, stop. Let him go, let him go, let him At go. least he is loading go. up and, and throwing that right hand with conviction. trying to set it up with a left hook to the body, which does land. Landed it moments ago. Looking to see if he can get him bite. Whether they admit it or not, there is respect here. Because ordinarily, they Roy would throw punches, throw combinations, lead off for left hooks, right hands. He's being very cautious. And also Hopkins. Stop, stop, stop. There is respect. I got you, I got here in this main event from the rabbit punches the low blows the head clash Hopkins began the round with a sweet combination jab right hand right cross and then the heads did come together let's take another look at it left right and followed by the forehand Evander Holyfield is sitting ringside, and he had a certain weapon lowering that head as he came forward while Hop throwing punches. It happened there. Hopkins landing on that cut eye. Let's go, seconds out. Ray, what were we talking about earlier? Come the on, rivals? Come on, Stats. <laughs> now there is Ray's and Bernard and Roy. Standing opposite each other stop, 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 stop. for the 12th hook him, hook him, hook him. and final round. I want to see if Hopkins stop, guns stop, for a knockout up, in this up. round. Or if he's satisfied with just winning a decision. Shot the right hand up top, then brought it back down underneath. Tried to get it under that left elbow. Stop, stop, stop. I got you, stop, 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 stop. I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm going. Tony Weeks should get war pay. Stop. Roy 
tying up. And they came to the inside there. Each man said numerous times they would get rid of the other. They're bitter rivals. Bernard put it out there, laid it in concrete. Now, just 80 seconds to make that a reality. It doesn't have the look of it, though. Bernard wanted to punish him, and Roy wanted to knock Hopkins out. That was their intention. But easier said than done. These guys, these guys have so much experience. They know how to survive. They have more experience, and these guys are, are used to facing in the ring. Yes, you're right. Doug, these guys have so much experience, so much ring generalship, so much heart. I'm proud. So I guess now it's one apiece, guys, huh? One win for each one. Bernard coasting home, bringing this into a soft landing. will head to the ring to find out what each man thought of it and if that satisfies Bernard Hopkins enough. Ray, that was a strange one. That was a very interesting fight. Uh, Started off with Bernard controlling pace and controlling range and being more effective than the middle goings with all the oddities of the late hit of the hitting behind the head the low blows the head clash the drama the delays the breaks in the action the near brawl and then it finishes up where there could have been desperation and urgency and there just wasn't those of you at home who texted in to our Cerveza Tecate who is winning text poll Bernard Hopkins 61% of the vote. I'm an AT&T guy, but does, does it count? <laughs> Were you texting during the fight? <laughs> I was. So Roy, it was bizarre. with that bruised eye cut with the clash of heads, and then numerous times looking over at us during the broadcast as Hopkins was down in pain from being hit to the back of the head. And the judges' scorecards are now in the hands of Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. Don Trello scores at 117, 110. Glenn Trowbridge, 117, 110. Dave Moretti, 118, 109. All to the winner by unanimous decision from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Unanimous decision for Bernard Hopkins and a show of respect and sportsmanship after 12 rounds that at times hardly had any. Bernard Hopkins, the 51st win in his legendary career. Still, and keep in mind, and I know this was a, a matchup of two guys past 40, but still Bernard Hopkins is among the pound for pound elites according to ring magazine and number three in the light heavyweight rankings and ray it was very obvious to read on the scorecards it was obvious um roy did not uh, pressure as much as i thought he would um, do you think he'll have regrets of missed opportunities no, I mean, considering all facts. Or were no opportunities there at all? No, there were not. I think that sums it up, doesn't it? It does. The 